I, uh, I did. I left the internet for an entire year. I was 26 years old, and uh, it was May 1st, 2012, and I, I pulled the plug. And there were a, a lot of reasons, uh, but the main reason was probably that I was 26 years old, and uh, you know, I, I didn't have life figured out, and I was really overwhelmed. And it was a bit of a crisis, and it just felt like everything was too much, and I couldn't win. And, and the internet kept on coming, and there's more emails. You can't, you can't win against your email inbox, because the moment you hit archive on the very last one, you're going to get a new email. And you can't win on Twitter, because there's, there's, so much, there's so much Justin Bieber to talk about. And there's just, you know, it, it, and I just felt this uh, in a really overwhelming, very personal way, that the internet was sort of defeating me and suppressing me. Uh, I of course, owe my entire livelihood to the internet. I, I was 12 years old when I started using the internet uh, and I contracted the sickness. And, and it, I've uh, probably used the internet for the majority of my waking hours since then. I was a web designer as a teenager. I started writing about technology as a journalist when I was about 20. And so it's all I've ever really known. Uh, I don't know what life is like, you know, without the internet, without being constantly connected, without, you know, an email inbox. I do remember a time before Twitter, but it's really hazy. And, uh, and so I, I, I also had this desire to get some stuff done. I, I, I wanted to do some personal study, some reading, I had some writing projects that I was putting off, and I figured, if I quit the internet, which is using all of my time, I would have unlimited free time to, uh, to accomplish the things that I, I, I desired to accomplish. And uh, so, I quit the, <laughs> so I quit the internet. And the, the question that I was kind of asking um, beyond my, just my personal goals was, how does the internet use me and how do I use the internet? And it's, it's you know, at what point are my decisions and my goals dictating my behavior on the internet? And at what point are the, 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 the apps and the, the people and the processes and just how the internet is, the medium itself, how is that dictating my behavior and how is that changing my behavior? Uh, in the mid-90s, um, Nicholas Negroponte, who is a, uh, the founder of Wired Magazine and the MIT Media Lab, he wrote, you know, the, the web was very early at this point. He said that web surfing isn't really a thing. It's kind of a fad. We can't, we can't keep this up. This isn't really how life gets done. Uh, you know, pretty soon there's going to be bots, and they'll go out on the Internet for you, and they'll find all of the information, and you can get back to being a productive adult. And maybe the kids will have time to surf the Internet, but that's not going to be us. We can't do that. We're productive members of society. And, and he was totally wrong. <laughs> the internet's for surfing. That's what we do when we're using the internet. Uh, and, but in, in a sense, he was right that it's, except for a select few people, uh, and I know I'm not included in this, when I'm using the internet, you know, outside of a little bit of research, I'm not really typically being productive. At least that's how I felt. I, I wasn't accomplishing the things, like I said, I wanted to write. I wanted to read, and I wasn't really accomplishing those things when I was clicking on links, when I was tweeting, when I was on Reddit, you know, when I was absorbing this vast, amazing, incredible sea of information, I was more often than not being distracted by it instead of, uh, of built up by it, and, and I didn't feel like I was being productive, and I wish there was those bots to use the internet for me so I, so I didn't have to use it. Uh, and I contrast the way I use the internet with, with um, how my parents use the internet, I, I do think there's a difference there where they are able to use it more as a utility. It's a very useful, incredible invention for them. They, they, they go on Amazon and they buy a thing and they check their email and they send an email to me asking me why I haven't emailed them recently. And uh, you know, my mom's on Twitter now, my dad has Instagram, but really it's a very tiny fraction of their life and then they get back to doing the things that need to be done. And for me, because, maybe because I grew up with it or because I'm a nerd or, or, or I have a low level of self-control, my life was the internet and other things maybe happened in the margins. Uh, and, you know, I was, 
you know, I'd be looking down at my phone, and, and then I look up, and there's a person still there. And I was, oh, that's good. And I look back down at my phone, and I'm back in my world where I belong, where I understand, and, and what, I, what I know, and where I'm, uh, I'm, I'm capable. So when I left the internet, uh, I felt this amazing sense of freedom. I quit, uh, you know, texting in addition to the internet, so I wasn't getting any email, people weren't checking my email for me, I had no connection to the internet, and uh, I was so free, I was so happy, I was high on life, and everything smelled better, and uh, I had a skip in my stuff, it was just so good, and the, the sensation I had is kind of like a, like a 15 year olds, like, you can't tell me what to do, internet. You know, like, I, I, my life is mine now, and I get to make the choices. And you, that email that's incoming doesn't get to mess with my plans for today. Uh, and it was, it was so wonderful. And I, and I experienced some new sensations that I never really had before, uh, or not in a long time. And one of those was boredom, <laughs> just incredible, intense boredom. Uh, and, uh, I don't know if you've ever been bored before. It was kind of a new thing for me. I'll describe the sensation. It's um, you're not doing anything right now. You don't have anything to do. And there's nothing at arm's length that can fix that. Uh, you know, when you have the internet, the moment you're kind of thinking about maybe being bored, you can grab your phone and you swipe to unlock, and now you have an entire world of information and entertainment right in front of you, and maybe you don't want that right now, but you're not bored, trust me, because I got bored, and it was a very different thing, and, and it, it, it's um, something actually creative people have talked about for a long time, it's this time that you, you know, some people call it meditation, but you get you solitude, and you, you have a space to think and be creative, and I also found it was a time to actually decide what I actually wanted to do, instead of taking the path of least resistance. Uh, I also had very different interactions with people. Uh, and this is something that's been talked to so many people so, so much about, you know, does Facebook really bring us together with people or is it, are we just hiding on our, our computers pretending that we have friends? And, and I, what I found is that without the internet, I, I could be with a person in a much more intense and a much more personal way. And that's, those were words people use. Like, that was intense. It was intense hanging out with you. It's scary. To, even on the phone, I was scary. Maybe, maybe this wasn't a compliment. But I, I, really, I really valued my ability to, to talk with people in a way. It wasn't just that I didn't have a, of a phone that could distract me right then. I also didn't have my mental cycles thinking about, you know, are my emails stacking up somewhere? Am I missing something on Twitter? You know, did I, did I forget to check in at this place on Foursquare? Uh, you know, I didn't have that distracting me and it allowed me to be much more in the moment and my, my sister told me that I became more emotionally available uh, than she'd really known me throughout her life and uh, I had a conversation with a friend that I'd known for years that was, we just got to a deeper level than we'd ever gotten and I just, I treasure that like so much. Uh, and then there was a flip side to both of those things. Boredom is awesome if you do something good with it. But it's not awesome if you just play video games. <laughs> and that's what I started doing. I, I, I swear, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm 20 years old, 20, and I'm just stupid, and I played so much video games through that year. And I, that became that thing. I, I didn't know about it right at first. I didn't actually play a lot of video games before I quit the internet, but it became that thing that was really easy, it was right in arm's length, and, and I would grab the controller and, 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 and just, you know, get rid of that sometimes terrifying feeling of, of boredom. And I wasted so much time, I can't, I can't even tell you. Uh, the, the other thing that happened with people is that while when I was with them, it was really great and it was really personal and really intense, I stopped hanging out with people as often. Uh, I kind of got disconnected from my social circle. It was, it's definitely very difficult to keep in touch with people out of state, and my family's kind of all over the country. But even people in my city, you know, I, I'd, miss, I'd miss the email, I missed the Facebook invite, uh, you know what, I, I, I forgot that that movie was coming out this weekend, and you know, you miss a couple of those, and then you kind of miss more and more, and, and early on, a lot of my loneliness would prompt me to to go out and, and reach out to people on 
call people on the phone, which they hate. They hate when I call them. They, they would much prefer a text, especially for making plans. But I, I, had to, I had to stick by my principles, and I'd call them, and, and they didn't want to hang out, or it was too late. And, 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 and that loneliness sort of built on itself, and I became very withdrawn. And Sometimes I want to hang out with people for, for a week, and I, I just came out of sync with my social circle. I, I wasn't in on the jokes, and I didn't know the lingo, and I hadn't seen the same movies. And that was, that was really tough. Um, when I came back on the internet, that was one of the most intense experiences of all because it was so overwhelming. And I think maybe we forget how skilled we are at using the internet and how much of your brain it requires to use. And I had trained myself through this year of, of, of you know, engaging with you know, one idea at a time, or one video game at a time at least. But you know, I, I, I had been working, I'd been reading some books a little bit, and, and I was really into that, you know, capturing that one big idea and one big book, and, and how great and elegant that was, and talking with one person at a time. And all of a sudden, I had 10 browser tabs, and 20 people were telling me which links I had to go to, because I missed them during the year when I was gone, and I had a, my phone and my laptop and my tablet, and it was so much. I, I literally began to panic that first day I was back. And throughout that week, I was very stressed. Um, about a week in uh, from being back on the internet, I was at my coffee shop, and I was going through email. I had about 20,000 unread emails when I got back. <laughs> I forgot to put an autoresponder on my email. And, so a tip if you guys are going to leave the internet. <laughs> um, and my sister came in, and she wanted to talk about her day. And, and I, 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 was, I was listening, and kind of, but I also was thinking about what was going on in my inbox. And, and I kind of started to open my laptop a little more and kind of nod along to what she was saying. And she said, well, the wall is back up. And it's this sensation. She's had this deal with this whole, her whole life that I am plugged into this computer and she wants to talk to me and I'm not really 100% available. Maybe 10%, maybe even 90%, but I'm not 100% available. And I closed the laptop. I, I, I didn't want to be that person anymore, but uh, you know, I, I missed at least that moment. Um, when I, I got back to the internet, maybe you should know this about me. I, I, I wrote for the, a technology publication called The Verge. I helped found it. It actually launched six months before I left the internet, which is probably a little ironic. But uh, I, um, I, I was trying to get back to work. I wrote about my experiences for the publication, so I was able to have a job publishing articles for the internet without having the internet. I'd hand them a thumb drive and they'd put my stories up. But I wanted to kind of earn it back a little bit and do some really good work. I, I started doing a story in my first month back on Google Glass. So I went from no internet to having the internet literally on my face for a week, uh, you know, learning this device. And, and I got so into it and, and, and I was finally kind of getting some productivity back and learning to manage all this multi-pronged attack of the internet. And uh, I had a Skype call scheduled with my brother and sister-in-law, and I hadn't seen them visually, and, and I hadn't seen their kids, you know, probably six months. And I didn't really want to do it. I don't know what it is about that, but somehow that thing that you really aren't the most into, it's just a random link on the internet, it's stopping me from wanting to connect with somebody that's that important to me. But I, I, I did. I sat down on my project, and I, and I Skyped with them, and my, my niece played me uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on the violin. She's learning the violin. Uh, it was a very slow rendition, uh, it was <laughs> but it was beautiful. And, and she and, and, and my nephew had both written original songs that they'd written in crayon on pieces of paper, and they held up to the camera, and they sang them for me. Her song was called Horsey Ride. His song was called Helicopter Stop. And that was such a precious thing. And, and, and it's not just that I almost missed that out on it then, I missed out on that my whole year of being off the internet. And, 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 and it's, the internet is a very valuable, awesome thing. And, and, and uh, I, did, I don't want to take that for granted anymore. Uh, I got kind of lucky when, when I came back to the internet, I was kind of trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. And the idea popped into my head, which I wish it had occurred to me earlier, but it finally did occur to me that I had spent an entire year focused on myself and trying to fix myself and improve myself and become a better me and educated and, and things like that. And I realized maybe I should spend some of the next year doing something for, 
somebody else and be a little less uh, selfish. And, and, and besides, it didn't work, right? I, I didn't fix my productivity. I didn't do the, all the reading or all the writing I wanted to do. So I needed something else uh, to, 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 to do. Um, so I decided uh, I would do something for people or try to, try to care for people. And uh, my brother uh, just deployed with the Air Force. Uh, and so I have currently living in Colorado with my sister-in-law and helping out with the kids. And it's so great because, you know, I realized in this time without the internet that leaving the internet is not going to fix my problems. Uh, it's something people quoted a lot to me when I came back and saw my sort of failures and struggles is that, you know, wherever you go, there you are. You know, I could change my circumstance, but I'm still this guy that's just not very productive. But I also am a guy that really does love people, and I love my nieces and nephews. And this is a different brother, actually. I have two brothers, nieces and nephews. It's very complicated. But I, I, I'm able to spend time with these kids, and it's, it's such a rewarding use of my time. And, and, and it's, uh, finally, I'm able to kind of dictate back to the Internet what I do find important. And, and that's, it's just, it's, it's cool to have that power over it. And I kind of, again, feel that freedom I felt right when I left the internet. It's like, you're not the boss of me. It's like, yeah, okay, I suck at productivity, I get distracted easily. But it's not the internet's fault. I'm in charge of my life, and I've decided what I want to do is hang out with these, these kids for a while while their dad's gone. And, and that is so rewarding. I, um, my nephew has some Star Wars toys, and he has... No idea what Star Wars is. And so he's describing to me the function of a lightsaber. And he says, the lightsaber shoots the competition, and the competition is fires, which has just so many errors in that sentence. The lightsaber is not a gun. Um, but uh, I tweeted it, of course. And somebody tweeted back to me. It's a friend of mine. He's an Orthodox Jew. And, and, and I talked to him a lot while I was off the internet. Because uh, he, you know, he understands this, finding this balance. He's a technology analyst but he honors the Sabbath and he spends that day with his family. And he said, you know, if you were still 100% online addled, you would have missed this experience. And if you're still 100% offline, we would have missed it. And I was, yes, I did it. I found a balance. I did something in real life. I told the internet about it. I'm very happy. And so I just want to make sure that we ask ourselves, what is our priority and that we do that thing and not let the internet tell us differently. Thank you.